Well, it certainly looks like it's streaming now. Welcome everyone. We're going to get our, our live studios online and open up our live chat discussion in just a moment. Please bear with me and thanks so much for joining Industry Cooking Classes, PBS edition. It'll just be a moment while we bring our studio online for joining Industry Cooking Classes. And as you can hear, that excellent, excellent program is going on live right now. Looks like we've got several listeners viewing and I wanna uh, tell you how much I appreciate you showing up. Again, this is Dave Nelson and we're here with Industry Cooking Classes, PBS. And this is another edition of Between Two Stoves. We are super excited to have been able to bring you fine educational programming and insightful discussion along with exclusive command performances. In this episode of Between Two Stoves, we are presenting two local food-focused nonprofits that are promoting opportunities and events in our local community. This episode has been made popular by a generous endowment from the V. Miller Meats Charitable Trust, where you can mention industry cooking for 15% off of fine naturally sourced meats from Stemple Creek Ranch and Rancho Yano Seco. And for a limited time, subscribers should be sure to ask about a cruelty-free recyclable tote bag just right here with every purchase. Isn't that super? I think it's super neat. I think it's super neat. So let's get right into the show. I'm bringing on a few local nonprofits to talk about events and opportunities that they've had listed in the local community and I wanted to help get the word out there. So first off, I'm gonna bring in a good friend of mine, Letitia Sohai. She has been working with Alchemist Micro Enterprise Academy. She's been helping jumpstart small food businesses from the inside. The city has offered free tuition to 15 small business startups. If you have an idea at home for the next big food thing, please check out Alchemist cdc.org slash AMA. But I'd rather have her tell you all about it. So here we are with Letitia Sohai. So ladies and gentlemen, I have Letitia Sohai today and I wanna thank her so much. She's here from the Alchemist Micro Enterprise Academy and um, she is kind of involved with a 12 week cottage food business training course that helps entrepreneurs through the process of starting up small food businesses. Um, so I have been involved with these guys for around two years in sort of an advisory capacity, if you want to call it that, right? You know, and I, yes, I've, taught a few, yeah, I've taught a few courses along the way, but um, I wanted to bring Letitia in today to talk about uh, alchemist because she's in a much better position to kind of get into the details of what those guys do. So I want to thank you again for being here. Yeah, thank you for, for in, inviting me to come uh, and speak about Alchemist. They, we, we have a lot of different programs that we get into. Um, I'll just give a little brief background. We have uh, our main one is Cal Fresh at the Farmer's Markets. So if you're out there in Sacramento and you're visiting the Farmer's Markets, you usually see um, our booth out there, um, and it's for, for people that have SNAP benefits, food stamps was what it was called before, and it helps people get uh, more access to fruits and vegetables. So that's normally what people see us doing, but we have other... Can I just throw in a little thing? It, it, uh -huh. What I understand, you guys are kind of doubling those folks' money when they come in and they kind of uh, check in with you, you're going to give them uh, tokens or whatever to get twice the money that they normally would have gotten out of the farmer's market. Is that right? That is correct. We actually have a, we're a part of a partnership with the Ecology Center um, and the CDFA to offer a market match. So we match uh, folks dollars, dollar for dollar, up to a certain amount, depending on the size of the market and all that kind of stuff. So they can actually get up to $10 extra to help them stretch their, their money and be able to buy more, more, more fruits and vegetables for their, for their families and stuff. And they'll be use the rest of their money for other things that they need more bulk items and stuff like that. So we're really excited to have that program. But in addition to that, 
as if that's not good enough, we also do <laughs> land based, right? We also do land based uh, projects where we take uh, empty lots in different food deserts and stuff. There's a few in Oak Park, um, and we take those and we make community gardens out of them. So if you're familiar with Oak Park, there's one Broadway uh, Soul. It's on Broadway itself. You can go and you can rent a plot. You can grow your own fruits and vegetables. Sometimes there's education stuff that happens in there. And there's actually a little kitchen in the back. And you can go back there and, and eat and hang out and have a picnic and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's usually open during the day. And then on Martin Luther King and 14th, there's an art garden, um, which is really unique because it has, um, you can go there and you can put ribbons, there's ribbons of hope there, there's murals there, but there's also an edible um, orchard there, tangerines, apples, all that kind of stuff that people can actually go and, and eat. It's got kind of a little funky, got kind of a funky vibe yeah. going in there. It does, it yeah. does, yeah. Pretty cool. yeah. Totally open awesome. to the public, you can go, you don't have to be invited, you don't have to call us ahead of time, you can just go and, and hang out and contribute, you can leave a piece of artistry, um, and all that kind of stuff, and we maintain it and make sure that um, things stay safe and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Really, really cool. Better than an empty spot. <laughs> so so you're doing all of this stuff around town, um, but you're also running this little micro enterprise academy. I kind of wanted to talk about that. Could you kind of tell us more about the um, program specifically and what kind of subjects and topics that students are typically going to see going through this little micro enterprise academy? Sure. So the Alchemist Micro Enterprise Academy actually started with the idea of corner store conversions. We actually used to do that too. And we used to try to bring fruits and vegetables into corner stores and try to get some of those corner store um, owners to um, promote more healthier eating and things like that. Uh, but we found that, you know, their business model was theirs and we respect that. So we were figuring, okay, how can we inject more of these businesses and do a lot more social economic development in the community. So we started the, the AMA program. I'll just refer to it as the AMA program because um, AMA also means love. And so it's a 12 week program. Originally it was 10, but we expanded it. And basically every week is a different um, topic. So the first week is intro to food business. We bring owners in, you can bounce ideas off of them. You get their wisdom, what mistakes they made, what accomplishments they made. And then moving forward, we bring in the health department. Got to talk about the permits. That we want everybody to have their permits, right? Yeah. And then we move into like food business concepts. We bring chefs in to come and teach different topics. We also talk about Ooh. food safety, right? Um, it's a food business after all. So we have to front load it with the food first. Um, and then we start going into heavier topics like taxes. Please pay your taxes for your food businesses. Um, and then we move into marketing, which is very important. If they don't know you exist, they can't buy your yummy food, right? Um, and then we move into finances, how to manage your money, how to manage employees. We talk about HR stuff. Um, and at the end of the program, they end up with a full, viable, livable, and growing uh, business plan that they can adjust as they need. And they also, which is new um, that we started in the spring, they also create a, a pitch deck, a slide deck that they can use. Um, and it's virtual because we're in a virtual world right now but they take the slide deck and it's about two to three slides and it basically takes all the important pieces out of their food business into this digestible piece so that they can launch it and pitch it to different investors um, as they see fit. Yeah, so they get two, two bonuses. Yeah. So it sounds like everything about their business just in a few quick little slides like that elevator, yep. that elevator speech. Exactly, you know, yeah, exactly. like the visual it. elevator pitch. So what are, can you tell me about the students that you guys are typically reaching? I mean, can it be just anybody? And, and how far along are some of these people when they come to you? Are they just starting out? Or can you talk to them? Oh, about gosh. Such a variety. Um, I believe the, the most we've ever had is someone being in business was two years. Um, and then a particular person that was in business for two years, she actually just started on a whim, a hobby that she liked, and it actually took off. And she was like, oh my gosh, she's exploding. And she was like, I don't have these fundamentals, you know, uh, which is a good problem to have, but she wanted to step back and get those fundamentals so that, right, so she can go to the next level. But typically we have people that have some sort of idea or they got a recipe from their grandmother or an aunt and, they, and people are like, you should start a food business with this and they want to take off with it. 
Uh, we also have chefs in the program who have worked for other people for 30 years and now they want to do something for themselves. And then we also have people that they, their business idea is, I want to have a food business. And that is literally it. They don't know exactly what it is. They have several ideas, five ideas floating around. And we also help them hone in and, and figure out where do you want to start? Where do you want to launch? And, may, and sometimes all of these ideas actually fall under one umbrella. So we just help them organize how they need to awesome. do each step and, and get where they need to be. So uh, two years or less is normally the, the groups that we've seen, but we're, we're pretty much open to anyone that wants to, you know, take a step back and help and, 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 and get that help to, to go where they want to go. We have people that have had businesses before, they've closed and now they're starting over. Um, and they have tons oh. of experience in, in ownership. Yeah. Awesome, but but you're giving them the, the setting them up for success this time around. Hopefully, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, how's the program doing? Uh, um, have have we gotten a few businesses off the ground so far? We have. Uh, so the program has two tiers to it. So we have the online program, which is the educational piece, and then we also have the incubator program. So after they finish the online program, they can apply to be incubated. Uh, uh, the incubation program uh, we call them A Kippers. Um, they can stay in that program for two to five years. So they, we basically take them from their business plan where they left off with AMA, and we actually help them through their permit, help them get their registration with the state if they're a processed food business, help them launch. Um, so yes, we have several businesses. So we have Necknosh. She has these really fun pretzel necklaces that you can do at festivals. So hopefully we can get her up and going when festivals open again. But Yes, uh, for now, she's finding, we're helping her find other revenues to uh, sell her necklaces. So um, it's a really fun, great love product. It. Kids love it, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also have Jazzy Saucy Sauce. Um, it's an all-around, really delicious sauce um, that you can put on anything. She has a really great, colorful Instagram page. Um, I'll try to send you a link for that. Um, and then we also have um, Andrew's uh, Side Hustle Pizza, where he does pizza uh, pop-ups. So, you know, right now right. in COVID, breweries can't stay open unless they're serving food. But most breweries just, you know, do their thing. They just serve beer. So they've been reaching out to different pop-ups. So he's actually doing like two to three pop-ups every month around the area uh, to sell his stuff. And then we have another person, uh, Chris, who has pickled uh, red onions of different flavors and stuff. He has like spicy and lime and, and all those kind of things. And he's going to go into farmers markets and eventually into the stores we're hoping to get him in stores and he'll he'll want to take it nationally so it's really exciting to see them go from idea to fruition and watch them like go through the steps and and it helps with incubation that you're not um going through the website going through the white noise on your own making expensive mistakes hiring people that might just want money and not really helping you um, and then they can contact us, vent their frustrations. We make connections if we know someone that can help them with things. Um, and, and it really becomes a community. Even between A-Kippers and AMA folks, we hold socials where they help each other and bounce ideas off of each other oh, wow. and That's great. send each awesome. other links to different things all the time. Um, so it's really, really great. And with COVID, in our spring cohort, we met two times in person. And we were like, oh, my gosh, everything's shutting down just like all over. And we said, do you guys want us to put the program on pause? Uh, we don't know where the food industry is going. We don't know where the program's going. We can't meet in person. And they said, you are our norm. If you want to make sure that the program is running and you want to do it Zoom, we will be there. And, and we like blown away. So we're scrambling, getting Uber conference and Zoom and all this set up and stuff. Right. And right. It, it truly was a community coming together. And this cohort is the same way. And we, we send each other links to where the toilet paper is. Um, that's how close people have become and sharing babysitting services when, when safe to do so and things like that. So yeah, it's not so, just come in and you're a student and you leave. Um, you really become a part of, of a family. You're a community. That is so awesome yeah. that, that people are like, like doing those little things, you know, hey, I need a babysitter or yeah. I, yeah, like can someone paper? bring me some toilet That's, paper and drop it on my porch? <laughs> it has happened. This is so real. That is so real. That's crazy. Um, uh, have we seen things like this in other cities and, and have they kind of, where they've been around for a while? I mean, what's the future of all of this eventually looking like? 
there's different variations of it. Um, we are a community of incubators um, around the nation. That's one of the positives that has come from COVID that we've been able to reach out to different um, organizations and stuff. Um, so I was on a call not too long ago and folks were all the way in New Jersey. And, and we have a presenter from Oregon that, that presents via Zoom and, and they're talking about um, incubation and the future of it. And I think it's gonna continue. If you can pivot and find a, your product and even be able to package it a certain way, make it a to-go product, even if that wasn't your original business model, there are people that are just swamped with business because they are able to step outside of what they were doing. Like we always tell them, your business plan is, is alive and it grows and it changes. And if you can grow and change with the times, you will survive. And some of these incubators, um, there are some that have a little bit of education component to it. Um, there are some that are just incub incubation only. Like you apply, you have to have your permits before you get in. Um, and they help you get your permits and things like that. But it's not a formal 12-week intensive. I mean, we have Google Classroom. You are doing homework um, in this program. Um, the, that kind of combination is, is very unique to this area. And then we also, you know, we try to pull together commercial kitchens and make a satellite system out of that. We really try to help you every step of the way. Yeah, that's, that's I think, one of the big things that, that small businesses need right now is that satellite kitchen. And I would love yeah. to see more, more programs or more even private individuals or anyone making more of those satellite kitchens available so we can see more of these um, entrepreneurs fire up these new businesses because I, I think the gig economy is upon us now. It, it, it was it was there right. before COVID hit us, but now that COVID upon us, everybody is going to need side hustles to bring money in. Uh, and I think this is a, a great tool for people that have never even touched business before. And you guys are taking them from through the baby steps, really, of, of what it is. And, and I think it's just great. Do you uh, want to shout out to anybody while you're here? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I want to shout out to my team, to the Alchemist team. So Jacob, he's my co-leader. Uh, um, he's in charge of the, the Alchemist Kitchen program, doing a lot of hard work trying to get our center developed. And he checks the money and dots the I's and crosses the T's for us. Um, and he helps me with the program uh, with, with Alma, and he's always there at every class. Uh, we have a new ED, Sam Greenlee. He does a lot of grant writing. I love him for that because I do not want to sit there and do a lot of that stuff. Of course, Davida, um, she's our operations director. She does a lot of our grants and stuff too. So any opportunity for them to take that part over um, so that some of us can be great. I really appreciate that. Um, and then the last shout out, we just um, finished some talks with the city. Um, and this just developed yesterday. Um, uh, we received some funding from the, the CARES Act um, for Corona Relief. And we're actually going to open up 15 more positions in the ALMA program. Um, like I said, we're four weeks in, but we're going to open it up and we'll, we're, gonna, we're setting up the timeline so they can get caught up and get through that. But we have 15 open positions and our application is live on our website, um, www.alchemistcdc.org slash apply. Um, you can put that in there, snag a spot. Uh, tuition has been waived thanks to um, our great city folks for providing that funding for that. Um, so if you're ready to jump in there and start your own business and all that kind of stuff, get in there because it is live. The first 15 folks. Uh, awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to promote the heck out of that because this is basically yes. <laughs> free, free mini business school uh, for yeah. you guys that have been out there just kicking an idea around in your head. I love it. I'm going to promote the, the daylights out of this. That is so Thank great. Thanks so much for, for having uh, the time to talk to me today. And I, I had really wanted to be wanted to do this for some time now. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for the idea. Thank you for thinking of it. Yeah. Awesome. Really awesome. Perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So that was, uh, that was Letitia Sohai talking about the Alchemist Micro Enterprise Academy. Uh, people that are interested, you need to look at um, uh, www.alchemistcdc, Alchemist CDC, and uh, check it out. They've got all the information there. Next, I want to, um, you know, remember that it's not always about business, right? 
It's sometimes we got to get out of our head, especially in these times. It's great to get out to events that promote safe distancing while engaging the community. So today I'm going to speak with Paul Towers and he is the executive director of the California Alliance with Family Farmers. They are teaming up with Magpie Cafe and several local farms and ranches for the Equinox Dinner. The, equi the event is this Saturday, September 26th, and I spoke with Paul about it earlier. Tickets for this are gonna be at magpiecafe.com, and we're gonna bring on a little talk with Paul in just a moment. Here we go. Um, so. Starting out, I just want to clarify, Paul Towers, Executive Director of CAF, the Community Alliance, with Family Farmers. You're not Paul Bowers from the community against Family Farmers, are you? Okay, because if you're that guy, this interview is like over, okay? I got a serious bone to pick with that guy, okay? Paul Towers, thank you for coming on the show, okay? Um, you are with the Community Alliance of Family Farmers, as I said, and I first off just want to say that we're here to promote the Autumn Equinox Dinner that's happening here this weekend on Saturday, but I wanted you to tell us a little bit about um, CAF, the organization. Can you kind of run down your mission a little bit for us? Sure, happy to do that, Dave. And uh, yeah, sometimes my superhero name is Paul Powers if I, if I need it. But uh, yeah, I think you know the the history of CAF is is a long one. You know, it's a we're a forty year plus old organization uh, founded in Davis, really at the kind of advent of what most think, what people think about is organic agriculture. So you know, group of kind of back to the lander kind of hippie farmers and some sort of radical land owning farmers got together and decided that there needed to be a voice for kind of small and mid-scale growers that were trying to do things differently in California agriculture. Uh, they wanted people to be connected to their food, where it came from, how it was grown. Uh, and I think that's what, you know, many of the modern good food movement is about. These folks wanted to uh, see a different kind of understanding about food the land, air, water, all the interconnectedness of it, as well as what we're putting into our bodies. So that was really our group of farmers. We've evolved over the years, but really held on to that DNA of how do we keep people that are stewarding the land well on that land and then providing food into our local communities, into our local restaurants, to our local schools, um, whoever it might be. And so CAF is really the organization that tries to provide that backbone of support to keep farmers farming. And uh, we do that in a bunch of different ways. Um, it's actually things like, how do you make sure you're compliant with, you know, complex federal food safety regulations? Uh, how do you make sure that the soil that you're working is the kind of most vibrant soil it can be and sequesters carbon and holds as much water as possible? So, so hold on, let me stop that, you there. It's not just yeah. uh, throwing seeds in the, in the ground and waiting for everything to happen, right? There is quite a lot involved with this. You guys do a ton of work. Let me um, just kind of shout out uh, yeah. for listeners, go over to the CAF website, CAF.org website, the timeline, the storyline of what, uh, how it all came together is there. It's fascinating, fascinating stuff. Tell us more about the resources there, but you got to get over to CAF.org to check it all out. It's great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. There's a lot on the websites and, you know, it's a lot aimed at farmers, but also community members. We've actually created a new directory for folks that are interested in figuring out what local farms they can purchase from. Uh, we realized this came up quite a bit during the pandemic. And as folks were asking us, you know, who, what local farm can I sign up for their CSA, Community Supported Agriculture? How can I sign up for weekly shares? How can I, um, you know, who can I go purchase eggs from? Or who can I buy, you know, more broccoli from? Whatever it might be. Uh, we're creating a new directory that makes a lot of that easier for folks that want to do direct purchasing with farmers. I was going to say, not just for the customers, but also bring in those opening markets for the farmers, right? Who are just trying to pivot and figure out how to do business during the pandemic. It ain't over yet, right? So yeah, I, I saw you guys are involved in some disaster support for farmers as well. Maybe talk a little bit about that because that's very relevant right now as well. Yeah, thanks, Dave. I'm, I think the reality is that, you know, we were already losing four farms per day in California before the pandemic hit. So the downward trajectory of the success or future of, of farms in the state was pretty precarious. And what we saw with the pandemic first off uh, is that 
markets were wholly disrupted. You know, we had farmers that their entire business model was selling to restaurants. And much like restaurants themselves, that meant that they had to figure out and entirely pivot their business. Well, if you've already got crops in the ground, how do you do that? Right. And it's that, something a lot of people don't really think about that, that interconnection with our food system and how, you know, we stop going to restaurants and it goes, it flows all the way down the line to the farmers as well. Sorry. Sorry to break in there. No, no, that's exactly right. I think it's this interconnectedness. And we saw that whether it's folks that were selling food to, to K-12 institutions, to, to local schools, the changes in how schools procure, the changes in wholesalers. Many of our growers, one of the way, ways that they were actually kind of making most of their money to cover their business was selling to tech companies in the Bay Area. Well, when tech companies closed all their campuses in the Bay Area, that meant there were now no can no institutional markets for those growers to sell to. Uh, but I was going to say, I think people listening may not un uh, may not realize those corporate campuses he's talking about are huge operations. Thousands of people work in there, and they just turned off like a light switch overnight. So people again have to figure it all out. Yeah, that's exactly right, David. I think it was very difficult. So I. We've seen a lot of that challenge with markets, probably market instability has been the greatest challenge for small and mid-scale growers. Uh, but, you know, we first had the pandemic, we were able to provide some emergency assistance, as you noted, we were able to raise $275,000 held at the Sacramento Region Community Foundation and micro grants to over 110 farmers that actually received these micro grants to help get them through the pandemic. In many cases, this was the ability to pay a utility bill or to cover your mortgage or to cover seeds, uh, just very basic necessities to help support so, some of our farmers. Where the rubber meets the road, and that's that's CAP that's putting that all together, and you guys are writing grants to get bring in money and all of that stuff. That's, that's uh, the work that you guys are all doing behind the scenes there, really great stuff. Um, hey, I wish I could talk all day with you. You, you sound, it, it sound, it, it's all just stuff that's it's very close to my heart. But let's talk about your Equinox dinner because it's coming up on Saturday. We, we got to kind of get there. So um, uh, uh, Saturday, September 26th, can you kind of talk, tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, you know, as many of us have learned, the model of how we do dinners is totally different. Um, you know, in olden days, we used to do a dinner at an orchard at a farm with a bunch of people and some music. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we love those things, but yeah. and we, we look forward to them again, hopefully, in, in maybe a year's time. But I think right now the reality is we want to keep people safe in the restaurant business. We want to keep our restaurants thriving. We want to keep our communities healthy. We want to keep our farmers thriving. And so the model for us is let's do a takeaway dinner, you know, that folks can come up and, and pick up, put, you know, an actual full meal in the back of their car if they want, or pick it up and walk across the street, in this case from Magpie Restaurant, over to Fremont Park across the street and do a socially distanced di dinner there on a blanket with a bottle of wine. That's so that's, that's really the idea. Dinner, 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 dinner for two, food. yeah, with local 16th food. 16th and P, if I can clarify. 16th and P is that location, sorry. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so the, the idea is full meal, multi-course meal in a box you actually get to take with you, bottle of wine, and uh, take it wherever you want. In this case, we happen to have our event concurrently with the with Farm Aid's annual uh, annual you know event concert. So if you want to go home or stay in the park and blast your Bluetooth speaker and listen to Farm Aid, Willie Nelson, and you know Brandy Carlisle, and you know whoever else you want, that's your chance to be here. I'm a Bonnie Raitt fan myself. I love that slide guitar and everything. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, uh, uh, a new up, a new fellow coming out, Neil Young, I believe his name uh, uh, is his name. Yeah. Uh, anyway, super cool that it's that it's all coming together like this. A uh, uh, really clever marketing idea. And uh, hey, it's a it's community building community. It's it's bringing together all of those links in our in our food. Uh, uh, system here, the farmers, the restaurants, it's keeping restaurants open and things like that. That's awesome. Tell us a little bit about um, the Magpie Cafe and what they're putting together over there, if you can. Yeah, they're uh, working on a pretty exciting, I think, menu. Again, we try to source as much from local farmers as we can, um, folks in the region. You know, part of one of the challenges we see during emergencies, whether it's the pandemic or fires, is that a lot of the farm, little and local farmers get left out. It goes to big distributors outside that money doesn't come back into our communities and our economies. And so that's really what dinners like this are supposed to be. How does some of the money go back to support Magpie? How does the money go back into local farmers' pockets? And how does it help nonprofits like us that support? And so the menu very much is, you know, local beef. How do we do braised beef? 
with the local kombucha squashes. Uh, you know, uh, these these are great local items. We have uh, local endive. We have you know local walnuts, uh, local cheeses um, from lots of regional farmers. So it's it's going to be a pretty exciting meal. Bread from Faria and from local grains. Oh, you awesome. know, macarons from Ginger Elizabeth. Lots of just lots of wonderful things, and then. Um, you know, a variety of great red and white wines that folks want to drink uh, that they're welcome to pick. So we're just excited. We're putting it all together. Ed Rohr, the chef there at Magpie, is, you know, incredibly flexible, and we just bring ingredients from local farmers. He figures out how to put them all together, and so we've been really appreciative of that. Well, I saw the menu. It's beautiful. I, I don't want to go too much into detail on the menu. I kind of want to pe have people go over to the website and check it out. So you're going to go to magpiecafe.com. It's that easy. Uh, head on over there. They've got the menu posted there. They've got the list of local farmers. They've got the wineries that are involved. Like you said, Faria Bakery, Ginger Elizabeth. Look how many um, uh, elements we are bringing together in this one great event, not to mention Live Aid 2020, right? Uh, uh, super, super cool stuff, man. I'm just, uh, I, I'm going to be leaving town some, that morning, and so I'm going to miss out, but I'm, I'm really sad about that. But I'm really excited about this, and I really appreciate what you guys are putting together down there at the Community Alliance with Family Farmers. Is there anyone else we can kind of shout out to involved in the uh, organization that we haven't already mentioned? Uh, I think we, you know, we have a wide range of folks that are on the, the CAP board, um, we have, you know, Donnie Andrak, Michelle Basso Reynolds. These are folks that have been long involved in the Sacramento food scene and part of oh, our board. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Pete Price, who's a veteran Sacramento lobbyist and, and been really involved in CAP and, and actually was our lobbyist for many years, uh, working on issues around small farms. So these are a lot of the key folks. And then we have farmers on our board from all across the state, Northern California included. Uh, and, you know, really that's our, our vision is that farmers, small farmers should be helping lead the vision of what a, a resilient food and farming system should look like. So uh, mm -hmm. check out folks like Al Shane at Frog Hollow Farm and, and Brent Wood is on our board. Uh, you know, you, you won't miss Farmer Al and his overalls. Um, and yeah, he's, awesome. he's been a critical voice for, for the work that we do, uh, really since we were founded. Right, these are sharp guys and, and they really, really are, are the ones that are keeping us going, right? If we don't have, uh, farmers, we don't have food, and without food, we don't have us, right? And so I really, really appreciate everything you guys do down there at CAP. I just want to give a shout out to your hat on your head there. Um, and and I want everybody to remember, get out to the Autumn Equinox Dinner. It's Saturday, September 26th. It's uh, in two days, right? Tickets through magpiecafe.com, and they have all kinds of cool stuff over there on their site. I should shout out to Magpie. Always so much integrity and honesty with their food there. I always eat real food when I go to Magpie. Um, uh, they, and, and I just hope black, local Sacramentans really, really support those guys. I love what they do. And I love what Paul Tower is doing over there at CAF, right? You guys are awesome. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I am new fan, I'm a new fan, right? And uh, I, I just want to thank you again. And I want to tell everybody to tune in next week when I'm bringing on Paul Bowers, okay? He's the head of the Community Alliance Against Family Farmers, and you better believe I'm giving that guy a piece of my mind, okay? That was Between Two Stoves on Industry Cooking Channel PBS episode. I want to thank Letitia Sohai from Alchemist Micro Enterprise Academy. That's www.alchemistcdc.org. And uh, they are doing a great program out there. There are 15 tuition-free slots open in it for those people that are coming up with the next big thing in food, okay? I also, I also want to thank Paul Towers from CAF, the Community Alliance with Family Farmers. They are putting on an Equinox dinner along with Magpie Cafe and several other Sacramento farms and producers around town. This event is this Saturday the 26th and tickets can be found at magpiecafe.com. That's right, magpiecafe.com. I want to remind you, you can watch Industry Cooking on Mondays at four o'clock on Facebook Live. And these shows, they distill decades of kitchen industry wisdom into tasty bite-sized nuggets that you just won't see on the other so-called food channels. We are also bringing you Between Two Stoves every Thursday at 4 p.m. on Facebook Live. 
bootleg interviews from regional chefs, bakers and butchers, and farmers and others on the front lines of our local food industry's struggle to survive. Like, share, and join the industry cooking community on Facebook. You can interact and play along with like-minded food folk over there. And to watch anytime, go to Industry Cooking Channel on YouTube, where they're running a special free subscription offer right now. Be sure to subscribe. And don't forget to mention Industry Cooking Channel for 15% off at the wonderful V. Miller Meats at 4801 Folsom Boulevard. And remember, be true to your food and you will always eat real people. And don't forget, the party is always in the kitchen. Ladies and gentlemen, class is dismissed.